viewers and welcome to yet another episode of Crime Watch, a program brought to you by your police service, the Zimbabwe Republic Police. On this program, we touch on crime issues occurring across the country and efforts by the police in fighting this cage with the help of few members of the public. I'm your host, Tendekai Dandarazi. It's good to have you along. Rebuilding of the national head in the country is aimed at boosting the agricultural sector through beef exports However, stock theft remains one of the impediments in attaining this goal. Cattle rustling syndicates have been arrested by police and lots of recoveries have been made across the country. Following a tip-off from farmers, ZRP Plumtree managed to arrest a three-member syndicate led by a 69-year-old former stock theft convict. This prompted the police to unleash Operation Mombe Wazitola Pony, Inkomo Wazitola Ngapi, Omombe Wakazuanepi, leading to the recovery of 61 cattle and two donkeys. The operation is still ongoing and more cattle are expected to be recovered. The rustlers used fake store clearance forms, which were recovered by the police, together with a fake ZRP date stamp. We had been investigating a case uh, whereby the complainant lost nine head of cattle. We proceeded to the area where we suspected that stolen cattle were being sold. We managed to make a breakthrough when we got to one of the cattle wrestlers known as Keeper Nuve. Keeper Nuve and his family devoured to us that all the cattle were being brought to the villages and being sold to several uh, buyers in the village. We also arrested Bernard Moyo and we received further information that they were working with one another kids known as Killion Moyo. We made a follow-up where they were selling all the cattle and we recovered more cattle and at the moment they are amounting to 61. I would like to thank the members of the public for the information which uh, resulted in the arrest of the three accused persons. I would also want to urge members of the community to brand their cattle as most of the recovered stock is not branded and it becomes difficult for us to identify or for the public to identify their cattle. This is local structure is in Omo, Nyaga, from 2015. I recover <laughs> Not it on the Gera Mumbia two thousand fifteen. Well, as it only Zibo with Zimu Mumbi Zaganda Pon Anga Anga Zibu Mumbia Ganda two thousand fifteen. We take a thing as a guape. They are two thousand seventeen. I always guys Zib. No way Zib. So Tokumbila with my poor Zabegave Zame. He will be on the given total miss a good eight to seven Mumbi Nebunjinji Guazo. Van Vuan Mumbi Zabo. I am glad that these recovered the cattle and two donkeys have been positively identified by the complainants. We are happy here in Mbulili Mamangu in terms of information which we are sharing with members of the public. We will continue with the campaigns in our district so that we can the stop theft. Meanwhile, where the police is in possession of five cattle which were recovered in their area and are calling for individuals to come and identify them. Still on stock theft, the police is worried with the general increase in the theft of chickens, mainly in the urban centers. The trend from May to June 2019 reveals alarming statistics. In the month of May 2019, a total of 7,969 chickens were reported stolen across the country, and by the second week of June, 4,207 chickens had been stolen. This increase has been through fake eco-cash transactions, conning of children or maids by thieves who visit homes in the absence of parents among other means. We urge you to verify before releasing stock. Meanwhile, 
In Manikalen province, police have arrested Clifford Karaga, age 25, for unlawful entry and theft cases which were occurring in and around Mutare. We got information from a reliable source to the effect that there was a non-criminal who was involved in a spate of unlawful entry and theft cases within the CBD of Mutare. The detective expeditiously reacted to information, managed to arrest the accused person. They also managed to recover this pistol which we are seeing here. And all this property which you are seeing here, you could take anything. For example, kitchen utensils, as you can see here, there are water glasses, some pots, we have got blankets, as you can see there, and also some big gadgets like this refrigerator, as you can see here. In the same vein, the Criminal Investigations Department Mutare has also arrested George Dune of Dune Village in Buhera in connection with 10 cases of theft of cuppers which occurred in and around Mutare. Dune has been on the run following the arrest of his accomplices and he is appearing in court for numerous cases. His arrest came after CID partnered with other branches of the police, Kenyan Section and Support Unit, and tracked him at his hideout in Buhera. The accused person cleared four cases of unlawful entry and uh, ten cases of uh, theft from motor vehicles. He was convicted of two counts and he was sentenced to 24 months on each count. The detectives in the Mutare have since brought a number of strategies that are aimed at arresting this case. Among them, our detectives have since made a random follow of wanted persons and our CRLOs are over the ground conscientizing members of the public to practice both target removal and target hardening techniques so that they don't fall prey to the criminals. It is against this background as well that CID Mutare is calling upon all the residents in Mutare to safeguard their properties, especially uh, household goods that among others include but not limited to televisions, uh, home theatres, uh, cell phones, laptops. We take a short break. Join us in the second segment as we bring you more. Welcome to the second segment of Crime Watch, where we continue looking at arrests by the police across the country. Zetara Pichitung is arrested a gang of armed robbery and unlawful entry and theft criminals and recovered a motor vehicle which was used in the commission of crime. They also recovered several cell phones and television sets, among other goods. As Zetara Pichitung is, we have experienced an increase in cases of unlawful entry and cases of robbery, where our casualties are mainly people going to work in the early hours of the morning and uh, coming from work late hours of the day. We have a recent case where one complainant was going to work around 5 o'clock in the morning. He met three robbers. They men handled him and stole from him a mobile cell, uh, cell phone and cash amounting to $260. We made a follow-up on the accused persons and managed to apprehend uh, two of them. On indications, uh, we managed to recover a lot of stolen cell phones and the property was obtained to their owners. The accused persons uh, were sent to court and uh, were sentenced to 36 months in prison. I would like to thank uh, all residents 
for their unwavering support and assistance which they are rendering to the police officers in their day-to-day -day operations. I would also like to encourage all residents in Stumbiza area to join our community policing initiatives such as a, a crime consultative committee, neighborhood watch committee and also encourage their children to join the junior call. While parents and guardians are expected to be protectors of their dependents, it is disturbing that cases of sexual abuse are still being encountered. In Zengeza Chitungwiza, a man was arrested, convicted and sentenced to 10 years imprisonment for having sexual intercourse with a young person. ZRP Chitungwiza also arrested a 44-year-old man after he on several occasions allegedly raped his 7-year-old daughter. We received a case of rape which was involving juvenile who was aged 7 and a father aged 44 years. The matter came to light after we received a tip off from the member of the public and we interviewed the survivor. The survivor revealed that her father was sexually abusing her and he abused her on several occasions. We then took the survivor to hospital for medical examination and the doctor confirmed that she was sexually abused. The accused person we appeared before the courts and was convicted of rape and was sentenced to 16 years. My family is a Gawanda. Babana Mai, they are going to South Africa, they are going to UK, they are going all over the world. Kunotraga, ways and means, you find a girl, you are 15, 16 years. They are not going to be a bomba. But within the means, my neighbor at times, our team is in marine time. When you find the gate abuse, no one was in the world, but you are not rape. And I'm not going to see one, 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 on this disturbing trend. What is more worrying is that uh, the majority of the perpetrators are people that are known to the victims. This could be relatives or neighbors. And um, usually these uh, cases happen when uh, the parents would have left the children in the custody of these uh, male relatives or neighbors. And our uh, message as the victim friendly unit and as the police is that uh, parents should never trust any male relative to be in the custody of their children. We are also worried as the Zimbabwe Republic Police with the time that is taken uh, in reporting these cases. Uh, most of the cases are actually uh, brought to the attention of the police as a result of uh, a discovery rather than a disclosure. It is important for children or any other person who has been sexually abused to report early. Basically for two very important reasons. The first reason is because of the medical related issues or interventions that can take place. From a policy point of view, if a case is supported earlier, we'll be able to get evidence that we'll then be able to use as we proceed with the case in a court of law. The other trend that we are also noticing that is also of concern, Pawaruku famba vachenda uchikoro, uye pawaruku famba vachiva uchikoro. Tuda kukuru zira wabereki, shukuru kuti, ngati tari sisei, tuone kuti vanavedu, e, pane darura kaita sei kufapamba kushika uchikoro. Vanu famba mzira za kaita sei, ngati uone kuti vana pawane nguwa chifamba. Va, kwansa kuti vaende vanu mwomunu, uchikuru ele, anu kwansa kuwa perekeza. Uye tuda kukuru zira, shukuru vanavese wakaterera. Kutikana paine munu, anenge awa bata, ngava sanyarara. Ma teacher aripo, ngava taurire ma teacher wao, vabereki waripo, ngava taurire vabereki wao. As the Zimbabwe Republic Police, uh, we have got uh, various uh, sections that deal with um, community engagement. For example, we've got the Victim Friendly Unit, and we also have the Press and Public Relations Department. All these departments, they have got deliberate programs to engage the communities on issues related to child sexual abuse. 
There are also other civil society organizations that we also work with. For example, we've got Child Line, we've got the Adult Rape Clinic, and so forth, Family Support Trust. You can actually pass on information to them, and they will in turn advise uh, the police. Part of our work is to ensure that children or adults report in a very safe and confidential manner. And as soon as they, we get that case, we immediately link with the victim-friendly unit, police officers within the different areas where we operate from. Communities need to be suspicious of certain arrangements within communities, whereby a child, a girl, stays maybe with an uncle alone in a very big house. They should be able to report that because it is important for children to be protected. On the other hand, we continue to experience murder cases across the country where people have lost their lives in very disturbing circumstances, which include, among others, domestic violence and beer brawls. In Rusape, a man was recently arrested for murdering his elderly employers. Said Rusape received a report of murder and attempted murder of a 72-year-old female, Fainan Berry, and her husband, Elson Berry, aged 73 years, who was struck on his forehead. The scene was attended by detectives and duty from branch members. They managed to recover the murder weapon, which is an X. Then the detectives spread the message to the public to assist the police with whatever information on the whereabouts of the accused. The information was received from Zemunia police that they had arrested an accused by the name Elias Maponto during their night stop and searches. After they interviewed him, he revealed to them that he had committed an assault in Rusape. The accused was then brought to CID Rusape and he made indications on how he committed the offence. The accused was then taken to court. Officer commanding ZRP Rusape district also added his voice in such cases of murder. We want to urge the prospective employees that whenever they want to employ uh, a person, they should make sure that it goes through the vetting process by the police. This is a free service which is offered by the organization. You will realize that in this case, there was no any criminal background that was checked on the uh, suspect. We also want to applaud the coordination of our units leading to the apprehension of this suspect, the CID, the duty uniform, and the police intelligence. And we also want to thank members of the public who gave us very essential information which led to the operation of this suspect. Uh, let me also take uh, this opportunity to encourage members of the public to attend our crime awareness campaigns that will continue to educate members of the public wherever there are some congregations. They should take the messages that were passing to them very seriously. This will help us to reduce the crimes that are affecting our communities. We urge you to exercise restraint, have respect for human life, and always seek counseling whenever you have problems. On this sad note, we take a short break. Join us shortly. The ZRP and the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe continue on their journey towards road consciousness to reduce road traffic accidents. To achieve this, drivers are urged to acquire defensive driving skills. Defensive driving is a course that teaches you to prevent accidents in spite of the incorrect actions of others or the presence of adverse driving conditions. So the law ensures that whoever is driving a public service vehicle is in possession of such defensive driving skills. A public service driver, whether goods carrying or passenger carrying, is required by law to have five years prior driving experience. They should also be in possession of a valid defensive driver certificate issued by the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe. They should also have a medical certificate which is issued by a government medical officer and which is valid for a period of one year. They should also undergo a retest once in every five years. There's also another requirement whereby the 
driver is expected to display, like on this vehicle, they're expected to display the a valid defensive driver certificate and a valid medical certificate. The will of the law is to ensure that whoever enters this public service vehicle will be able to see the defensive driver certificate and the medical certificate. Then, before you even come to a police checkpoint, members of the public who are boarding the commuter omnibus should know that they are being driven by a driver who is in possession of the requirements. On the other hand, there is interaction between public service vehicles and private vehicles. So we also urge members of the public, those who drive private vehicles, to ensure that they also do the defensive driving course so that there is proper interaction on the road and they also apply the same principles in order to avoid collisions. Coming here has been quite uh, an eye-opener in uh, from the way I've been seeing things happening on the roads and now that I've attended these lessons, it's really been helpful on the roads. I'm really appreciative of the efforts that are being done by uh, Traffic Safety Council and I hope people out there can actually come and embrace this opportunity to be uh, safe and stay alive on the roads. Meanwhile, the construction of police posts and bases is helping in bringing police services closer to the people. And at Woya Business Center in Muzarabani, Mashonal and Central Province, members of the community handed over a police post to the ZRP. With the help of Muzarabani Rural District Council, members of the police constabulary in the local community teamed up to construct this police post. <laughs> Atina kana musungu mchete, wataka unza metiri ya oseka nzuru, ya ikanonge ishanda kubaka ibuka ya kasika ya kanzi ya biwa kete. Mariche ngete za wae wawari ipo. Kule wakuti sinu, zedu sakatu chengete zika kutaha. Kana taa kutawara nyeze, kuti liyo. Chino tanga panya yiku, chile security yere, chile safety yere, wana iso sisi, chale, pese ya dupaduze. Community <laughs> Pamwe ina kuzivira kuparwa kwe zimosha mtu nurino Rose ere guru ya district Na kudaro takaita urongwa kwe kubatana pamwe chetene wa rujinji Mkuita basa hiri Rega hindi tande kutenda mzarabani rural district kanzo Ne kutubatira ni metiri ya weku waka chiva kwa chedi ichi chino nzo wea pesi Dinoti langai magadaro Dinoti tenda ozo wakikari mapuli sa hedu mapoli kwa ni members Nekura mba waka tungiri la kutichi wako wa ichi ichi mire Leka hindi pensire kutenda Waka rime musarabani makawona Soka kwa zira kuti Maputi sa edwa wana njimbo ya kushandira Ya kani ya sonaka Makawane urongwa Waku waka waya besi These are the fruits of community policing And we urge you to join any of these programs To create a crime free environment Please do contact us on the details That have been appearing on your screen should you have anything that may interest the police. From me, Tendekai Dandarazi, and the crew behind the scenes, pleasant viewing.